Hello, my name is Denise Fishburne. We're going to talk about iWAN. iWAN is Cisco's software-defined WAN solution. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be completely honest. iWAN, in my personal opinion, is a bit of a marketing term, so if you're confused as to what iWAN is and the pillars, iWAN is an umbrella that basically talks about all the things that you can do that are intelligent, wide area networking decisions. So it's very broad. It's got the Akamai, it's got the WADs, blah, 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 blah. What we're going to talk about is the transport independence piece. So when I say transport independence, what I want you to hear is DMVPN. When I say intelligent path control, what I want you to hear is PFRV3. So the first thing we're going to talk about real quick is why DMVPN? So why a GRE? So what we have here is we've got a branch and we've got a subnet 10.1.1.1 behind this branch and you're probably running over MPLS right here to your hub. Now your MPLS is a little expensive and it's probably a smaller bandwidth and you've got a lot of stuff going on right now. You've got Citrix, you've got Microsoft Office 365, you've got so many things that upper management is saying, oh, let's put it into the cloud. But then the branch has to access the cloud. So a lot of people are having problems with that. So you look over here at this internet link that is actually being used for all this time as a backup and you're thinking, well, why can't we use that? So what you want to do is you want to probably use this, but you want to do it with some intelligence. So let's break it down. What you want to do, let's say, and I'm going to say voice and video because all the customers I talk to, the only thing that they actually agree on as their number one, what's most important business critical is voice and video. Then it gets political after that. So we're going to have a voice and video call between 10.1.1.1 and 14.1.1.1. Business critical, so when it actually sends it, it's gonna have EF or AF41. Because you're routing and you have primary, secondary, it's going over your MPLS and you're also paying your service provider, which is why you have extra money that you're paying them, to actually have tight SLAs for those QoS settings. So it's coming over here and if you actually have a blackout then you'll actually move over to the internet. But some people are saying, well, why don't we go ahead and do one of two things? Why don't we actually, because we have no protection for brownout. We have no protection for our business critical traffic to go over the MPLS and if there is delay, loss, or jitter, to actually go over to the internet instead. So that's a situation that we're gonna talk about. IWAN has lots of things, but this is the one that actually specifically has to do with your business critical. So your voice and your video is actually going over here, your voice video phone call is going over the MPLS and let's say there's jitter there, okay? There is jitter here. I'm not gonna get into all the I'm not going to get into all the complications as to how we notice that from a passive monitoring, perf mom, all that kind of stuff. All I'm going to say is the jitter flag gets raised. Okay? So now you think to yourself, well, that's impairment on the, on the voice video call. Let me move it over to the internet. Now, if you just move it over to the internet without making sure that you're not going to move from the frying pan of jitter to the fire of delay or loss, so you're not gonna make the situation worse for the end user with your business critical traffic. So you wanna actually see whether or not this is actually okay, and then actually do a factual comparison. Now, of course, your internet is not actually this. Your internet is more like this, and this is a small case. So what we could do is we could, people think, oh, well, I'll just do a little, I'll do a little SLA probe. I'll just do like a little ping, like a little SLA probe between here and here. So between this WAN IP address and this WAN IP address. Now all you're doing is if you do some kind of SLA probe between here and here, all you're doing is you're checking the health of this source and this destination talking to each other, not this source and that destination talking to each other at all. So you're not doing intelligent decision making at the WAN edge because this is the environment. So if we actually did a probe from here to here, we're going to get to the first router, Internet 1, and then we're going to have ECMP. So right here is equal cost, multiple paths. Now what you do here all depends on what kind of box this is and what kind of hashing algorithm it has. Will it be a five-tuple hash where it's source, destination, IP, source, destination, port, and protocol? And it'll take all that into consideration, or a three-tuple hash, so it really depends on what this is doing as to which way you go. Regardless of what you do, pretty much you're going to be looking at this IP address and this IP address. 
So you might actually have this traffic go this way. Then you get to I2, and at I2, this is an ether channel, because service providers do ether channels just like you do in the data center. So they take a whole bunch of 40 gigs and bundle them together. So this is an ether channel, so you're gonna have a different hashing algorithm here. So if you actually hope huh, that this probe from here to here is actually gonna go over the exact same path as your business critical, you're, you're, you're wrong. You're, you're really pretty wrong. So how do you do that then? So what you do is you go ahead, and this is why GRE tunnels, okay? And so if you actually take this, and you take this packet that's actually coming in here, and you put this as a payload, and then you build a GRE tunnel from here to here, then when you're actually probing over here, you're actually going to, this guy doesn't know the difference between, this is your business critical traffic, and this is your GRE tunnel traffic between here and here, and every decision making in here is actually gonna be based on my IP, destination IP, protocols GRE, source port, destination port, I control this. So if I sent this business critical traffic over here, it would be here. Or I can send what's called a smart probe instead. But I'm gonna actually go over the exact same cables, the exact same ASICs, the exact same optics that my business critical will be. So if I experience delay or loss over here, then I will not move jitter over. Now that has to do with intelligent path control. So intelligent path control, all I'm gonna say is SD-WAN, software-defined WAN, any solution. What you're doing when you're doing any kind of SD, in my opinion, is you're taking the brain out and you're moving it someplace else, right? And they're gonna have software-defined of the environment. For us, that's uh, a domain master controller. So you have a domain master controller, and what you do over here is you say, okay, my EF traffic, or you can do NBAR2, so you can do DSCP, you can do NBAR2, you can say prefer MPLS, fall back to INET, and we have like six different classes, voice, video, low latency data, bulk data, scavenger class, so you don't have to know what your application thresholds are. We can just go pick one of the common ones. If you have a roll your own application or something a little bit more persnickety, then you can go ahead and do a custom uh, profile. And that goes ahead and actually gets pushed out to all of the branches because every branch has a little, a little uh, brain in there. And so that gets you through the DMVPN. A quick question for you. Why do we say that you have to do EIGRP or BGP? So let me explain that real quick. If the intelligent path control has an issue where we can't actually do this probe, again, we don't want to go from the frying pan to the fire. So we don't want to see jitter over here. And if I can't probe over here, do some Hail Mary of, oh, I've got jitter, let me just send it over there. So what you're probably going to do is in your routing information base, you're going to have 14.1.1.1 in there only once. That's going to go over your MPLS. If that's the case, then how the heck do you ever, ever, ever use this path? And the reason is, is because Intelligent Path Control PFRv3 actually can look at the BGP table or the EIGRP topo table. Again, make an intelligent decision at the WAN edge. And actually, that's about it. So hope you had fun. And I love V Brown Bag. It's really cool. You should watch lots of them. <laughs>